Welcome to another video of Sugar Technology. Before I continue, I would like to welcome our new subscribers. If you want to know anything to do with food science and technology, this is the place to be. Today I'm going to summarize sugarcane processing. I'll combine all the stages of sugarcane processing I had covered in previous videos in one video. This video will be brief, but if you want to get more details of each stage, kindly watch my previous videos on sugar technology. Table sugar is almost 100% sucrose. In tropical areas, table sugar is normally extracted from mature sugarcane since it's the only crop that has high sucrose content of around 12%. Unit operations used in sugarcane processing based on size reduction principle. They aim at separating non-sucrose components from sucrose. Below are the stages of sugarcane processing. The first stage of sugarcane processing is weighing and offloading. Sugarcane from the field is weighed at weigh bridge. It's then taken to Kenya where it's offloaded to the floor by people, hilo and loader, cranes or caterpillars. Token from the floor of cane yard is loaded to feed table which drop balanced cane to auxiliary cane carrier. The function of auxiliary cane carrier is to convey sugarcane through cane preparation devices. The second stage of sugarcane processing is pre-milling and milling. Pre-milling section has preparation devices like choppers and fibrizer. The function of these devices is to reduce whole cane to shredded cane for efficient juice extraction at milling section. Milling section has multiple sets of three rollers. These rollers squeeze shredded cane under pressure, removing juice from fibrous materials. Hot imbibition water is added to screen bagasses to absorb and remove remaining sucrose. Bagasses from the last mill is dropped to bagasses carrier, which transport it to powerhouse. Remember, bagasse is used to generate electricity in sugar industry. Biocide is added to extracted juice to kill microorganisms which may reduce sucrose content of juice. Extracted juice is sieved to remove bagasse, weighed and pumped to juice treatment section. The third stage of sugarcane processing is juice treatment. Extracted juice has impurities which may hinder or slow down the rate of sugar crystallization. These impurities are removed from juice at juice treatment section. Juice is first heated in dynamic and primary heaters to raise temperature to 75 degrees Celsius. It is then pumped to liming tank where it is mixed with phosphoric acid and milk of lime. Milk of lime contains calcium hydroxide which reacts with phosphoric acid and other acids in juice to form salts like calcium phosphate. Calcium hydroxide also raises the pH of extracted juice from 5 to around 8.4. Calcium phosphate is an insoluble salt hence form precipitates which absorb and hold other impurities in juice. Juice from liming tank is heated again in secondary and tertiary heaters then pumped to flush tank. Flush tank remove air from juice and reduce flow rate of juice for better settling in clarifier. Juice from flush tank is mixed with flocculants as it enter clarifier. Flocculants accelerate flocculation and sedimentation process to prevent charring of juice. Clarifier allows all the suspended precipitates and solids to settle at the bottom of the chamber as mud, while clear yellowish juice remain at the top. Mud is drawn out through coke one, mixed with bagasillo, then pumped to rotary vacuum filter. The filter sucks juice from mud, leaving filter cake on the surface. Filtered juice is taken to liming tank for retreatment while filter cake is scrapped off and dropped to conveyor bed. Remember filter cake is used as manure in the field. Clear juice is drawn out through cock 4 and pumped through evaporation section. This juice should be free from suspended solids and should have a pH of around 7.0 to 7.4. The fourth stage of sugarcane processing is evaporation. The main aim of this, sec of this stage is to concentrate clear juice with the aid of exhaust steam, vapor and vacuum to obtain a saturated solution. 
Evaporation station consists of a series of about five evaporators called multiple effect evaporation. Steam from powerhouse is used to heat the first evaporator. The vapor from the first evaporator is used to heat the second evaporator. This heat transfer process continues to the last evaporator. Product from last evaporator is referred to as syrup. This syrup is taken to pan boiling section for further concentration and crystallization. The fifth stage of sugarcane processing is pan boiling. At this stage, sugar crystals are obtained from syrup. Syrup from evaporation section is fed to the pan, then heated to metastable zone of supersaturation. Slurry or bee seed is introduced to the to this saturated solution to initiate crystallization. Sucrose is less soluble in supersaturated solution, hence it crystallizes out or attach itself to crystals present, leaving other components which make molasses. Feeding of syrup and boiling of materials in the pan is continued till the crystals attain the required size. Syrup provides crystals with sucrose, hence they grow in size. Sugar crystal growth takes place as a result of two processes, i.e. transfer of sucrose molecules from the bulk of solution to the surface of crystals. Number two is the incorporation of these molecules in the crystal lattice. Mixture of sugar crystals and molasses is referred to masecute. Masecute is dropped to crystallizer to cool, then dropped to centrifuge. The sixth stage of sugarcane processing is centrifugation. Centrifuge use centrifugal force to separate sugar crystals from molasses based on the difference in their densities. Molasses is less dense than sugar crystals, hence is pushed away from the spinning point to the walls of the centrifuge due to greater centrifugal force on it. This molasses pass through the screen and is collected in the molasses tank. While sugar crystals remain at the center, they are washed to, re to remove the layers of molasses, then dropped on copper. The seventh stage of sugarcane processing is drying and cooling. Sugar crystals from budge centrifuge has moisture content and temperature of around 0.5% and 70 degrees Celsius respectively. These parameters have to be reduced to 0.05% and 30 degrees Celsius in order to avoid spoilage of sugar produced. This can be done by dryers like hoppers or rotary drum dryer. In these dryers, hot and dry air is passed through sugar crystals to remove moisture. After drying, sugar crystals are cooled by cold air. The final stage of sugarcane processing is grading and packaging. The obtained cool and dry sugar consists of heterogeneous crystals and needs to be well graded before it is packaged. Sugar from dryer is taken to grader by bucket elevator. Grader has three sieves which with different pore size, hence separate conglomerates, fine sugar and sugar dust from sugar crystals that have required size. Graded sugar is then stored in the beans, while conglomerates, fine sugar and sugar dust are remelted. Sugar from the bean is packaged in clean and new jute bags or nylon papers by the use of auto scales. Packaged sugar is stored in godowns before it is sold to the market. That's the end for today's video. If you have any question, kindly let us meet at comment section. Thank you very much for watching my video.